Hello there, fellow adventurers. Well, uh, I'm really sorry I've been gone for so long. Uh, I guess about two months or so, and uh, almost three months since uh, my last full-length review video, which was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. All right, after all this time, I finally got the biplane started. Let's fly out of here. Look at me, I'm flying, I'm flying. Oh shit, I'm crashing, I'm crashing. So I don't really have a good excuse uh, for being away, but uh, now that I'm back, uh, I'd like to talk about some of the things that I'm working on right now. Firstly, I'm gonna be reviewing Galador, a German-only game that was recently translated with English subtitles. I'm also gonna be reviewing King's Quest II, both the original and VGA remake, as well as doing another short indie game review, which is all about dinosaurs and pebbles. But now I'd like to present a recent interview I did with Jonas Fish, the founder of Common Colors and the writer and programmer behind Prim, a new adventure game in development which is now on Kickstarter. Hi, I'm Jonas, I'm from Germany and I'm the game developer behind Prim. Um, Prim is a 2D point-and-click adventure game about Death's Daughter. That's basically the elevator pitch. Let's make it a bit longer. Um, Prim has the same dream every night. She dreams of a human boy crying out for her help. Um, and she, most naturally, as our heroine, she wants to help him. Um, but her father would never allow her to do so because he's basically afraid of everything she does um, and doesn't allow, allow her too much. This is why she has to escape. She has to flee from her dad to help that human boy. And this is the situation the players find themselves in in the demo that's out right now and everything else will be discovered in the full game. Um, Prim is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, we've reached our goal in 22 hours, but we are still trying to reach some of the stretch goals. So if you like the game, and if you like point-and-click adventure games with uh, Tim burton -y style, then head on to Kickstarter and pledge. This would be highly appreciated. Or just drop by and uh, say hi. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to ask ask the experts at some point. Um, I know that I wasn't completely unprepared when I hit the launch button because I've put a lot of effort in social media and building a community and um, talking to family and friends. Everything that you that you read when you read about what, what what do you have to do when you do your first crowdfunding campaign. And I tried to follow the rules as good as I could, uh, but I would have never thought that it would happen like this. Really, it blew, it blew me away. Um, and I'm still so very thankful. I was prepared actually for a 30-day period of immense insecurity and pain and crying myself to bed each night. All, all the tension that I built up uh, was gone after 22 days, and uh, 22 hours, and that's the biggest reward, the, biz the biggest gift anyone could have given me as a backup. So if you're watching this, thank you so much. Yeah, I think you can divide these three influences clearly regarding their area of influence. When it comes to LucasArts, the gameplay and the type of game, this is the influence that uh, I think of when creating or designing the puzzles or creating the user interface. When it comes to Tim Burton, then we have to look at the game's visuals and sounds. I, I aim to create a certain mood that his films have. Not only the big eyes, but I think what makes his animated films work so well is that there is a mixture of something that gives you goosebumps and makes you scared, especially when you're a child. But on the other hand, the characters are so lovable and the stories told are emotional. And this is something that works quite well. And I have not often seen this in games. When it comes to Terry Pratchett, I think you have to mention Terry Pratchett when you talk about death and death's daughter. And while creating the story, I've read more by Terry Pratchett. And I try to do something like that. I, I'm not doing everything like these people, these really talented people, of course, because I want to do something unique. But I, I've drawn inspiration from them, of course, from them. 
the game itself well, it, it, it depends on how you define production. The game as an idea has been in my head um, since about 2018 when I finished my last Game Jam game. And since 2018, I've been juggling ideas in my head about the story of Jeff's daughter. And I spent the first year actually to just uh, come up with a concept and ask a few artists to draw concepts and come up with a look and come up with um, a basic storyline. And there were a couple of stories in my head that I thought might work. So yeah, what I came up with in the end is that demo. That demo existed in in different versions. And in, a, in an earlier version, I handed it into the German Computer Games Award, for example, last year, uh, where we got nominated as Best Prototype, which was amazing and a huge push concerning my motivation, of course. Um, yeah, what we have now is that vertical slice, that demo, and concepts, of course. And real production phase is going to start now because I simply didn't have the money to produce it so far. Yeah, you have to imagine I started in 2016 without any knowledge of how to make a game. I've never done this, but I always wanted to do it. And so um, this is the, the piece of advice that I would like to give everyone starting out. Start with something really small, something manageable. And this is what I did. Uh, Adventure Jam is cool because you have two weeks to create a game and you have to face tons of limitations. And this these spark creativity uh, because you from first scratch to publishing a game in 14 days you learn so much and you meet so many cool people that agree to work with you because they like the challenge and doing this this I somehow yeah found my entrance into that adventure game scene that I'm so happy to be part of now and that has become such a regular part of my life and I found so many friends doing it, so I would, I, I, I'm so happy I did it this way. I have to be careful because I always tell the same stories in every interview, but this story somehow coined me, so I have to retell it. Um, the adventure game genre is so special for me because it's basically the genre for me. I'm not, I'm not the person that is going for being really fast or being really good with, uh, with a gamepad. That's not my type of, of playing a game. I enjoy something like that from time to time, and I've played some jump and runs that I enjoy or action adventures that I enjoy, but I've always liked games with great stories and games that somehow slow me down. The adventure game genre has always been the, the safe place for me, and it all started with Day of the Tentacle. And it's, this coined me for life, actually. And when I got, buy a game and I have to decide between two games, I, I will always pick the adventure game, to be honest. Okay, uh, hang on one second. Um... Oh, whoops. Oh, shit, sorry. Steven, you just kicked me out. <laughs> Steven kicked you out of the conversation. Okay. <laughs> No, no, really, the federal agent is, is the wrong word. Um, it's Beamter, so it means I am uh, the, the state, the German state is basically my boss. Uh, we are not hired by our schools, we are hired by the German state or by, by the state Hessen. So if you uh, translate federal agent, then it's basically Staatsbeamter, and this is what I am as a teacher. I've, I am, or I've been uh, the lead singer and the guitar player of a rock outfit called Inhuman for about 16 years now. If you want to Google us, it's Inhuman. Uh, and we play modern rock, that's what we call it. <laughs> uh, I, um, I also made a poll on this question. Should you be able to die in adventure games? And uh, my last tweet was, um, we have an elegant solution to this. In Prim, you are dead all the time. Uh, you know, some jokes are intentionally bad. Um, there's that skeleton arm by the door. And when Prim picks it up, she naturally says, that might come in, and everybody goes, no, don't do it, don't say it. That might come in. 
handy. And actually, this is not so easy to translate into other languages. In German, it doesn't function, for example. Da wird mir gleich ganz arm ums Herz. Well, first of all, people tend to never react in the way that you expect them to react. That's a painful experience you make as a game developer. The first time I showed uh, the demo to, to friends of mine or to fellow game developers, nothing, nothing worked out. And I had to start from scratch or, or reformulate the hints. But after letting 20 or 50 or 100 people play your game, you have a feeling of what works and what doesn't. And this is what I went through in, in recent months. I, I conducted a lot of testing. And uh, because every time I watch somebody play, they dance. I've never watched, never watched a streamer or YouTuber play the demo without him or her dancing when Thanatos is dancing. So this fact alone was, is proof for me that it was a good decision to let death dance in the demo. I designed the puzzles after designing the world because I think that puzzles are better when they are part of the world that you create. So I came up with locations and characters and I was thinking about, okay, what kind of things could this person own? What kind of hobbies might he or, he or she have? Uh, what's their motivations? And around this world, I created the puzzles. So of course, you have to use items in the puzzles that don't exist in the real world. Of course, you always try to avoid moon logic. I actually, I had one line in the demo, the spider eye moves from the lower position in the shelf to the upper position in the shelf. And Prim says something like, that shouldn't even be possible. And then she says, I hate moon logic in adventure games. Um, but I decided to cut all the fourth wall breaks out because my testers gave me the feedback that this destroys our immersion in the game. So I decided to go with as little as four wall breaking as possible. Um, yeah, sure. There's uh, one, one person that I would like to shout out the loudest maybe right now because he's become one of my best friends uh, in the online world. Uh, this is Tom Hardwich who's creating Lucy Dreaming right now and he's helped me so much by uh, providing feedback on Prim. He's created some of the assets on the Kickstarter page. Um, so he's helped me so much and he's going to be on Kickstarter as well in a few weeks or months. Uh, and if he does with Lucy Dreaming, then uh, then back it. It's going to be worth it. Um, on the Kickstarter campaign, it says we are going to release in December 2022. Uh, we are going to produce the game as fast as we can, but we're also going to do it as, as good as we can, because I don't want to release a product which feels half finished.